In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a very nice sort of volume wave effect that I use a lot in my simulations and animations for electromagnetic waves. So we're in Blender, I'm using version 2.92. It was just released. So that's probably 2.92.0000. Anyway, the first thing we need to do is just create an object in which we're going to make this volume wave and all the work will really be done in the shader. So we just have the default cube. Let me scale this in the X direction by some amount, uh, something like that. And we'll have the wave travel in the X direction and we can even animate this. So as I mentioned, we're not really doing much in terms of the modeling. Everything here is being done through the shader. So we'll click on the shading tab and we'll rotate this to a convenient view. And we'll also give, our, give ourselves a little bit more room here. So just enough to view what we're doing up here, but all the work will be done in the shader down here. Eventually, we will delete this principled BSDF, which is really for rendering colors on surfaces. We're going to use it just to look at some intermediate things so you can understand what's happening, but eventually we'll delete that and use the principal volume shader. So the first thing we need is our coordinates to make the wave. So we're gonna go to add and under input down here is texture coordinate. And we're going to use the generated coordinates and we always wanna follow this with mapping, which is under vector, yes. And so we'll connect the generated to the vector. Okay, so what's coming out of here is our X, Y, Z coordinates over the volume of our object up here. So we want a wave traveling in the X direction. So we would like to separate X, Y, and Z and really just work with the X since that's the direction that we want the wave. So we'll go down to converter, separate X, Y, Z. And that is our next block here. We'll feed the vector from mapping into the vector of separate X, Y, Z. And now we have the X, Y, and Z coordinates separate. So if we wanted our wave traveling in the Y direction, well, we would work with Y from this point forward. Or in the Z direction, we'd work with Z. But here, we're going to work with X. So now, here's where we're going to use the principled BSDF. If I feed X straight into the base color, we start to see some kind of gradient here. And so this is really a number that's going from zero to one. And it's from that that we will build our sine wave. So let's add a math node that's under converter down in math. And let's make this a sine wave. And what we see is very little difference. And that's really because this is just going from zero to one. And so sine of zero to one is still something that kind of goes from zero to one. What we really need to do is multiply X by some kind of large number. So let's duplicate this math node and we'll stick in multiply. Now we can increase this value and what we'll start to see is we see lots of waves and we can also see by this factor here, we can control the wavelength to whatever we might like. And so I'll make it, you know, something around here. And we'll go ahead and we'll just line these things up. Now there is a problem developing. We see a nice gradient in the white here, but the black is rather flat. And that's because the color doesn't do negative numbers. And of course the sine function is giving us positive and negative numbers. So we don't wanna send negative numbers into our color and that's something else that we will take care of. The other thing we'd like to do is animate our sine wave. and this didn't quite do it. This controlled the wavelength, but it's not really showing the wave moving. We need to add phase to our sine wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate a math node and we're going to change this to add. Now when I use this slider, I can see now I'm making a wave that's going back and forth. And this is the basics of our sine wave. So we can stick all these together and what I'll do is I will select all of these things and press Control J. And that groups them into this frame here. 
And rather than just call this frame, let's give this something meaningful to call it. And so I'll say calculate volume sine wave. And now we can remember what that does. Out comes a volume sine wave, but there's still some problems with this. We need to make it transparent. We need to color it, and we need to do something about the negative numbers. But first, let me add one more thing here under input, input value. So this is just a number. And so we eventually want to animate this wave. So I'm going to connect value up to value under the, the add node. Now here's a number that we can change. And so we can set keyframes on this number. We could have done it up here, but I tend to like to do it outside of the, the frames here. And we can keyframe this. And I'll show you how to do that, but we can make the, the wave move this way. For right now, we'll just keep this set to zero. On to the next thing. We would like to color code this, the positive and negatives being different colors. So we need a little bit more room. Let's move these over. And so we know in the positive region that what comes out of the sine wave is positive, and in the negative, it's negative. So that gives us the clue of how to map one color to positive and one color to negative. So what I'm going to do is add a math node, but outside the frame here. And we can make this a less than or greater than. Either will work. And I'm going to feed the sine wave to value. And for the threshold, we type in 0. So now anytime it's less than 0, we'll get a 0. Anytime it's greater than 0, we get a 1. So what's coming out of this value is a 0 or 1. And we can use that now to select different colors. So we'll go down under Color, Mix RGB. We can feed the value into the factor here. And what that's now going to do is select between these two different things. So we can choose one color for positive and one color for negative. So let's make, uh, let's make that red. We'll make our other color blue. But feel free to choose whatever colors you like here. Now we can feed this color into the base color. And what we'll see is we have the same thing again, but the positive regions are now red and the negative regions are now blue. Now we still don't want a surface shader, we want a volume shader. Um, so that's going to be coming up. Let's select these two nodes, do a Control J to put a frame around that. And let's label this pause, egg, color so we can remember what's going on there and maybe I'll even bump this down a little bit all right we need a little bit more room we need to take care of the fact let's feed our sine wave back into base color and so we'll just ignore this temporarily we're getting a nice gradient on the positive humps but not the negative humps and so we need to fix that so we're going to add a math node and we don't want the sine wave to go less than zero. So what we'll do here is we'll take the absolute value. We'll feed the value from here into that abs. Now let's look at what we have. Now we have nice gradients in the positive and negative region. Just looking at this, we can't tell the difference now between what is positive and what is negative, but we have this information up here in the color. So I want to scale the amplitude here a little bit. So I like to follow this with a power. So basically, it's going to take whatever number is coming out here and raise it to whatever power is here. And you know, whether I'm rendering with cycles or EV, sometimes I like to take the square root, which would be a 0.5 here. Sometimes I like to square it. So this is a number to play with when we eventually get the volume shader to see what looks best for your rendering. And we also may want to make it more intense uh, in another way. So we can follow us with a multiply. And for right now, we'll just set that to 1. So we're not actually doing anything. But it's another you know, button or knob that you can turn to improve the rendering. Let's go ahead and put a frame around that with a control J. And we will call this amplitude scaling. And now we can center this frame here. 
We're about done with our principled BSDF shader. We don't need the surface shader, so I'm going to delete that now and finally add our volume shader. So we're going down to principled volume. So of course we'll feed volume into volume. Our positive negative colors, we'll feed that into color. And the real magic thing here, our, our amplitude, we're going to feed into density. And now we can see a wave. Uh, that's probably too many waves for me, so we know to come back here and perhaps make this a smaller number. Um, yeah, something around there looks pretty good. And as I mentioned, we can make this wave look as if it is propagating by changing this. And we can set keyframes on this. And the best way I like to do that is go to frame one, set a keyframe to zero. And let's say the total length of my animation is 40 frames, and I want this to be cyclical. I will go to the 41st frame and set this to 2 pi. And I don't go to the 40th frame and set it to 2 pi, because then the 0 and the 2 pi will have two exactly equal frames, and there'll be a tiny glitch in the animation. So you want to make that frame right one frame after the end of your animation, that 2 pi, so when it plays and cycles, it looks really nice. So right now we have this with the EV shader, and we could go to the cycle shader, and I'll set that to GPU compute, might be a little bit faster. And I noticed cycles versus EV, uh, I might want to square or take the square root and play with this value. You know, other things you can also play with is maybe feeding amplitude into emission and have a glow effect. But this is basically it, and there you have a very nice volume wave effect that you can, you can animate a wave going in any direction. I hope you found this tutorial helpful.